Well, we at Microsoft are trying to make IoT simple when it comes to cloud development and connecting and controlling devices. We have partners like Texas Instrument who are making developers' life easier on the device side of things. And in that case, Adrian uh, from TI is here to tell us about SimpleLink that makes managing connectivity of devices on various types of networks super easy. Tons of demos on the IoT show right now. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host, thanks for watching. Today we have Adrian Fernandez from Texas Instrument with us. That's right. And we'll talk about IoT devices connectivity, right? So Adrian, before we jump into that, can you please share a bit about yourself? Who you yeah. are and what are you doing at TI? Yeah, I'd love to. So my name's Adrian Fernandez. Nice to meet you here, Olivier. Really excited to be on the show. Uh, so I manage the development ecosystem for the SimpleLink platform uh, with NCI. Uh, so the SimpleLink platform, in a nutshell, is really what we want to demonstrate here on this screen. It's a portfolio of ARM-based connected MCUs. So these devices, in addition to having your application processor, is also integrated with various forms of connectivity, both wired and wireless. And hopefully you'll see some you know, recognizable logos here in, on the screenshot, mm -hmm. um, because we've actually integrated those stacks in our, into our SDK. Okay. Um, and we understand that with IoT, your needs change. Um, and being able to have access to these various forms of connectivity inside of one portfolio is something that we're seeing a lot of developers find value in. Okay, so we are focusing a lot ourselves on, on simplifying IoT for IoT developers in the cloud, but also in, in the communication and in command and control of devices, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you guys are actually on the silicon side of things, um, doing the same thing, trying to simplify IoT for developers, right, correct? Right, right. Uh, and so the connectivity, as you guys might know, is not just about you know Wi-Fi or uh, or LTE, right? On mm -hmm. the contrary, actually, lots of these tiny MCU running on battery that connect on local networks, uh, low power, and so on, right? Exactly. And, and so jumping from one network to another one, or actually coding for these various networks, is a nightmare. Correct. Yeah, well, that's right. what we're trying to fix. <laughs> <laughs> so SimpleLink actually is fixing that. Let's talk about SimpleLink and 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 you know how people can use it. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, so like you mentioned, you know, Wi-Fi and Ethernet, those are kind of your obvious choice when connecting something to the cloud. Um, but there are other solutions out there, whether that be Zigbee, Thread, sub gigahertz solutions yep. as well. And you know, thinking really hard about the use case and identifying the pros and cons between those to make the appropriate choice. Um, so I actually have a use case that we can walk through if okay. you don't mind. I've got a couple of slides, but I do want to switch to a hands-on demo eventually. Awesome. Uh, so this is a typical use case that we're seeing a lot, and we think that the Simplink platform is well positioned to enable these types of developers. Mm -hmm. uh, so when bringing to market a connected thing, let's use a thermostat maybe yep. as, our, as our use case today. Uh, Gen 1 might be a Wi-Fi enabled thermostat. You know, awesome. Yep. Um, and they can use our SimpleLink CC32XX products uh, to, to enable those types of solutions. Yep. Uh, Gen 2, maybe they add Bluetooth connectivity to that because mm -hmm. they want to add you know, provisioning through a mobile app. You, know, you get an, a nice user experience yep. through you know, a, a, a mobile device. Um, and suddenly the customer now has two SKUs while leveraging a lot of the same software that they were able to invest in in, in Gen 1. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gen 3, they can then maybe use another SimpleLink product. Uh, this one in particular is very unique. It's the 1352 device. It's yep. multiband. Okay. Um, and what we mean by that, it can support both sub gigahertz and Bluetooth connectivity simultaneously. So when that's paired with one of our Wi-Fi products, suddenly mm -hmm. you have a multi-protocol gateway. Okay. Um, and essentially what's happening is, you know, from Gen 1 to Gen 2 to Gen 3, this traditionally thermostat-only you know, developer uh, suddenly has three SKUs that they can attack the market with, low end to mid range to high end, mm -hmm. um, and kind of behind the scenes incrementally building up a gateway. Um, so now okay. this allows them to take over the rest of the home, the rest of the building, the rest mm -hmm. of the factory through tangential sort of connected products. Okay. Um, and that's really where this, this idea of going to market with not just one product, but a portfolio of products come in mind. Um, and that's exactly what we're trying to enable the SimpleLink platform, uh, where suddenly you're not just a thermostat provider anymore. You're the building automation provider, mm -hmm. the factory automation provider, uh, the industrial factory uh, provider. And you're able to now do so by, by releasing sort of complementary solutions like moisture sensors, light yep, sensors, yep. occupancy sensors, um, and, and really take a, a platform approach, a whole portfolio of products, all while leveraging the same SDK. Awesome. We want to see that in action, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, the, the PowerPoint slides, they, they hopefully get... PowerPoint uh, looks good. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, show me. Show and, me and maybe, how it's done. I, I would love to. I would love yeah. to. And, and really, I could almost draw a dotted line right here. Yes. Um, and below that dotted line, that's where TI is maniacally focused on. Right? Yes. Enabling these low-power, uh, um, you know, high-end devices to ultimately securely connect to a cloud service like, like Azure. Um, and I think this is where it really becomes a complementary solution, yep. and I'm really excited to demonstrate that here. Let's do this. So 
to, to kick things off, uh, we're going to start here on TI.com. Okay. Uh, this is where developers can learn more about the portfolio. Uh, mm -hmm. But in particular, we do have a solution uh, called dev.ti.com. Okay. Um, and this is really where we point developers to get up and running. Mm -hmm. um, what's really cool about this site is that we have the ability of taking our Launchpad development kits, yep. you know, very low cost, easy to use hardware tools, mm -hmm. uh, and plug them in uh, over USB. Okay. And have the ability for the website to actually detect that EVM that's plugged in. Okay. Um, and actually recommend to the user, you know, starting points. So you can actually see here that it recognized that the CC3220 Wi-Fi Launchpad was recognized. Okay. And at that point, I can jump to a tool called Resource Explorer. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where our SDK resides. So developers nice. can get up and running. They can take a look at our software examples, take a look at our documentation. It started rapidly. So, exactly yeah. right. Um, so we can start browsing the software solutions that are available. Uh -huh. And what we'll see is that we do indeed have the Azure IoT plugin for our SDK. Yes. Um, and yep. this provides easy to use APIs to send data securely to the Azure cloud and really toss that data over the fence. Got and then it. once that data is in Azure, I can take advantage of all the capabilities yep. that Azure has. Totally. So you're basically pairing the, the SimpleLink SDK with the Azure IoTC SDK that we're delivering right. as an open source project. So you guys are just integrating that into the catalog there. You, you got it. it. You Love got it. it. Um, so we can go ahead and zoom into this software product here, again, yep. based on your CSDK. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll find you know various examples. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, I'm using this particular device, this Launchpad kit, yep. and we'll see several examples that we provide inside of mm -hmm. our SDK. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that I'll use here is the low power monitor demo. Okay. Uh, this actually, I think, does a good job of demonstrating the low power capabilities of this particular device. Uh, we can run on two AA batteries for you know several years yeah. operating over Wi-Fi, which is very differentiated. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, two AA batteries. You don't typically think about battery operated Wi-Fi products, right? No, no, don't you know? Um, I usually like battery would be like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we're trying to change that that, okay. that uh, perception. Mm -hmm. um, so ultimately, we can go ahead and find that example, and we can actually import that example into our cloud-based IDE that we call CCS Cloud. Okay. Um, so this, again, is another, I think, game changer. Uh, when you think about embedded development programming in C, you typically have to download and install you know, a no. big, beefy Dual development chain environment. chain and like, yeah, exactly there's a right. per seat cost. It's like, I, I remember that. It. I've been doing that. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, still yeah. Um, that's still available. That's still available. You you will eventually need that full-blown development environment. You can download and install that. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't want that be, to be your first step. You know, we want to be able to get you up and running very quickly, leverage some of our examples, maybe even make small modifications to those examples, okay. all here in the cloud. Cloud. Um, so nice. what we have now is, you know, once we found that example, we have imported it into our cloud-based IDE, okay. and you can see here uh, that I have a cloud-based workspace, mm -hmm. and the example that we imported is now here, um, and I can I can now take a look at the source code of that example, yep. and I can even modify that all here in the in the web browser. Um, so obviously, this example is is sort of a, a template. Um, I still need to provide a few parameters like my Wi-Fi credentials, okay. as well as my Azure connection string. Mm -hmm. um, so we can again just do that here all in the cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here. Uh, first thing I'll do is go to Wi-Fi config.h. Yep. Um, and this is where I can provide my SSID and password. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and type those in. And I do have a hotspot here. Nice. And we're going to use uh, WPA2 uh, security. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, configure that. Paste that in. Perfect. Um, and then the next step is uh, provide the Azure connection string. So yep. I can do that here in netmanager.c. Yep. Um, and I know where to go, but this is all well documented. We have a readme file you know, associated with this code example that yep. walks through the structure of the code and how it operates. Totally. Um, but scrolling down here, we see a placeholder for that Azure connection string. Mm -hmm. So I can switch over now to IoT Hub um, within the Azure portal yep. um, and actually grab that connection string. Nice. Um, so here we go. Here it is. Hit the little button here to copy it to my clipboard. So I'm doing this all inside of you know my web browser, just bouncing around between tabs. You didn't um, install any didn't tools, install anything. anything. Yep, totally. The, the USB actually drivers have been uh, imported the moment you connect it. Exactly that's right. That's mm -hmm. pretty much and, and that's a one-time thing, right? Once yeah. you've done that, then the browser ha will have the ability of interacting with your hardware. Totally. Yep, yep. Um, so we'll go ahead and just paste that in. Yep. Um, and that's it. So essentially, what this nice. code example will do is again, it'll demonstrate the low power capabilities of this device. We mm -hmm. do have a few sensors on board. Yep. Uh, there's a temperature sensor specifically that we'll be reading. Uh -huh. And what we'll do is we'll read that temperature sensor every 10 seconds. Um, and then every minute at that point, we'll actually connect to the internet, connect to Azure, yep. send it up to the cloud. Okay. Um, and once that's, that transmission is done, we turn off the, the network processor, jump down yep. to a low power sleep mode, and then periodically read those sensor values again. And that's the way you can actually leave for so long on just to like... Exactly right. Yeah, it's all about that duty cycle, right? Yeah, Bringing exactly. down yeah. average current yeah. consumption, stay asleep mm -hmm. as long as possible, yeah. wake up the radio yeah. only when you absolutely yeah. have and, to. And that's <laughs> interesting because actually lots of people consider that IoT is about like sending data all the time, like, right? <laughs> yeah. but 
But actually, in real life, it's not the case. Connectivity on devices is more complicated than that. You have the battery, you know, problems. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also the 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 the, the fact that devices might not be in reach of an access point or yeah, something, yeah, yeah, right? Because totally, they're totally. mobile. Uh, so yeah, definitely, it's super interesting to see how that works. And the integration, I guess, of the uh, of the simple like SDK with the the power consumption management, I think, is like pretty seamless as well, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, and what's really exciting is that we also have a, a energy capability that we can actually monitor the, the current consumption of this device. Yeah. Um, and you can very clearly see that duty cycle. You know, you're waking up for as short of amount yeah, of time yeah. as possible. And it's consuming, yeah. and then it goes down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah nice. exactly. Yeah. Um, so we'll go ahead and program this uh, example that we've modified. Okay. Um, I'll hit the debug button. Yeah, once again, um, from the browser, which is interesting because you're yeah. actually connecting. And yeah, and, and, yeah, and we're doing this live, so you know, within five minutes, you can find that example, make those modifications, you know, program your device, and have data up in, in the mm -hmm. Azure cloud. Yeah. Um, nice. And then obviously you have the ability to transition to a more you know full featured environment yeah. when you're ready. Doesn't have to be totally. Step one. This is as you were mentioning. This is the first step, right? So like first step should be something that is simple. Uh, it will continue being simple with simple link and the SDKs and so yeah, on. That's the goal, right? Uh, but and that's definitely the goal. But yeah, I, I agree. Like that five minute experience is is, is crucial for people mm -hmm. to really understand and grasp and realize that actually at the end of the day it's not that hard to implement yeah, yeah, complicated totally. things like that, right? Yep, yep. First impression is very, very important. Yep. So <laughs> we're aware <laughs> of that. Um, so now we're ready to actually start executing mm -hmm. code. Uh, what I will do is connect to the COM port of yeah. my launch pad. Okay. So we'll go ahead and uh, configure that, set the baud rate to uh, 150, 200 baud. Classic. Hit OK. Perfect. And now I can hit code, I can hit run. So now the code will start executing on my board. Yep. Um, and we'll see here, it's initializing the demo. It's connected to the access point. We're starting mm -hmm. to read some of that temperature data. Yep. Go ahead and zoom in here. And we haven't sent data to Azure yet. We're yep. again going to periodically read that temperature data every 10 seconds. Yep. So you'll start to see here, oh, got my second yep. sample. Yeah. Going yeah, to a low power sleep temp, mode. The temperature. And you're basically building the buffer of data you're going to send every exactly 10 right. minutes, right? Exactly right, right. And, and again, that's purely up to the developer. They can change those parameters if they want to yep. take more samples yep. or batch more, uh, send less frequently. They can obviously, obviously do yep. that. But hopefully, we can get them 80, 90% of the way there with this example. Yep. Totally. Um, so I think after the fifth sample, we'll actually go ahead and start sending that to the Azure uh -huh. Cloud. So we did create a uh, Azure web app here using okay. your, your easy to use cloud portal. Mm -hmm. um, and what we'll start to see here is, is eventually some of that sensor data start yep. to come through. So the web app is just feeding from IoT Hub and we'll just grab the data from the IoT Hub and display it. Yep, Boom. yep, exactly. So here we go. And because nice. you have the timestamp there, you know, it, yeah. you're not losing that data. It's still there, it's still available. I um, mean, you're still able to see, you know, what those values were over time. Um, but yeah, that's something we're very, I guess, right. proud of from a TI perspective is being able to do more at the edge. Yes. Um, obviously, the cloud brings a ton of value mm -hmm. and we want to leverage and exploit that. Um, but there's a lot of processing yep. you can do here as well. You yep. know, we have floating point units on these devices. You can do some pre-processing and, and additional math to have that logic and only send data to yep. the cloud when you absolutely yep. have to. Well, that's interesting because actually you're taking off the plate of developer things that should be commodity, right? Yeah, exactly. Connectivity right. and power management and, and all of that mm -hmm, should just mm -hmm. be there, right? Right. right Even right. in complex scenarios, that the one you were describing with this various generation of a device uh, scenario, mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. actually you need to think about the future and making that device future proof, right? Yeah. When you buy a thermostat in your home as a consumer and even more so as an enterprise, that device will be there for <laughs> yeah. five, ten years. Right, 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 right. So if you want that solution to evolve, you need to be ready in terms of the hardware. You got it, you got it. Love it. Adrian, that was a very insight, uh, insightful you know, set of information and demo for SimpleLink. Uh, people can get to TI.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll also add the, the, the developer interface Perfect. link yep. up there and SimpleLink links to the description. Thanks for coming to the IT of Show. Of course. Awesome. Thanks. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to the IT Show. See you soon.